Granny squares are on the rise in the home decor and fashion industries this year, so it's a perfect time to learn how to crochet this timeless pattern that's ultra portable. One of my favorite things about granny squares is how you can work on them without even having a project in mind, and without too much effort, you'll have a stack of squares ready to join and become your next project. Not too long ago, I did a mega experiment where I tested all the tips for crocheting neater granny squares, so while I show you how to crochet this classic timeless square in this video, I'll include these tips that I found to work the best, and that'll make sure your square is as perfect as it can be. While you can use a variety of yarn weights and textures to practice, grab your favorite smooth, medium weight yarn and a hook that's one size smaller than what you would normally choose. That's the first tip for crocheting the perfect granny square. Choose a hook size that's one size smaller than what you'd normally choose. A smaller hook produces tighter, more condensed stitches, and they look tidier than a square using a larger hook. Start with a slip knot and three chains and join with a slip stitch to your first chain, and chain four. We'll circle back around to what this chain means in just a second. Find the center of your tiny little ring here, I know do the best you can, and make three double crochets in that center. So this completes one side of the square. Then chain two, that makes one corner. Scrunch the stitches over, that's actually the next tip. As you're adding the clusters of three double crochets, push them back exactly where you want them to be to make the tidiest square. Next we need three more double crochets. Another chain two for the next corner. Three more double crochets. and two more chains for the third corner. So that leaves us with one more side of the square left to complete and back to this starting chain. Now you may not realize it, but we omitted a little detail in the traditional pattern and that's our next tip. Don't make a chain one between each cluster of three double crochets. This leads to larger gaps and typically less tidy squares. So this starting chain represents one of the three double crochets in the last side and the corner chains. While a chain three is the standard number for a double crochet, decreasing this by one chain gives us a neater granny square. And that leads us to the next tip. Start each round with a chain four and finish the last cluster of double crochets at the very end of the round. So make two more double crochets in the center and join with the slip stitch in the chain space. Not a specific chain, just around the whole thing. That's our next tip. Joining in the chain space at the end will make for a neater corner. When it comes to granny squares, an interesting thing occurs. We call it the granny lean. This happens as a result of starting every round in the same corner and never turning the square. In other words, you're always looking at the same side as you crochet. And that just happens when you crochet in the round. Which leads me to the next round and tip. Start each round in a different corner. Obviously this technique will create more ends to weave in, so there is a little bit of a payoff, but if you plan to change colors every round anyway, you'll have the extra ends already. So starting in the opposite corner of where you fastened off, make your four chains and three double crochets in the same space. So this is the start of the first corner. In the next chain two space, make three double crochets chain two, and three more double crochets. This is the pattern for every corner of a granny square. You'll use it four times in every single round, and you can go ahead and commit this one to memory. Every time you come to a chain two corner space, 
you'll make three double crochets, a chain two, and three double crochets. Now the first corner is only partially complete, but we still need the same number of corner stitches. So make two more double crochets and join with the slip stitch in that chain space. That's something else you can commit to memory. The start of every round from here on out begins with a chain four and three double crochets in the same space. And it ends with two more double crochets and a slip stitch in that chain space. Adding yet another color here and starting in the adjacent corner, remember how every round starts. Chain four and three double crochets. But look here, we have something new here. This isn't a corner yet. It's actually one of the long edges or the side edges of the square, and it needs three double crochets as well. And we have our corner pattern. And another side and keep going. The only difference between round three and four is the length of each side. As we increase the stitch count with our corner stitch pattern, the sides get a little bit longer and need more groups of three double crochets. So this time around, we'll start the same, but this time we'll make two clusters of three double crochets. Everything else stays the same. And the same is true for round five. Start in a different corner when adding your new color to help with the lean. Work the same starting corner pattern. And this time you have three clusters of double crochets for each side of the square. Everything else stays the same. While four or five rounds are usually sufficient for most granny square projects, you may want to keep going. In that instance, recall what you've learned so far. Every round starts the same. Each side grows by one cluster of three double crochets. The remaining three corners are worked the same, and the final corner is completed with two double crochets and a slip stitch. So as you're making a bigger and bigger granny square, the only thing that's changing is the number of double crochet clusters for each side. While it's entirely possible that you'll come across a slightly different pattern for the same type of square, I can assure you that this method with the tips we've mentioned, will give you an almost perfect looking granny square. The last piece of the perfect granny square puzzle we'll cover in the next video. As soon as it's ready, I'll be sure to link it here. But if you can't wait for that, you can find exactly what you're looking for in my granny square guide. I can guarantee that this is the most in-depth guide you'll find on granny squares anywhere, and it covers everything you would ever need to know. It's about a 16 minute read and worth every minute if you really want to get good at granny squares. Happy hooking and I'll see you in the next one.